Since we're learning how to write a compiler, let's first start with the source language and then we'll focus on the target language. Sources, the source language is going to be SimpleJS, which is a way of me to make concrete what is the subset of JavaScript that we're learning. It's going to have a slightly different syntax just so we can parse it using Racket very easily. But otherwise, it should be a subset. It should be seen as and understood as a subset of JavaScript. So SimpleJS supports the following features of JavaScript. You have very an expression, so you only have expressions, there are no terms here. And what you have is a variable, a let binding, which is declaring a variable x, assigning the result of computing this first e, and assigning it to x. And then you continue executing the second e, where x is visible in the second e. The next construct, we use the colon equals to represent assigning. So we're updating an object. We have the object x dot y, and what we're doing is x has to be a reference to an object, and y is going to be the field that we're assigning, and we are assigning an expression that is going to be evaluated. And note that x and y cannot be expressions for the sake of simplicity. We're going to assume in SimpleJS that x and y are variable names are identifiers you know they cannot be expressions although in, in regular javascript they can be uh, this field which i actually didn't explain is loading a field right so it's reading the contents of a field for an object and again these are not expressions they have to be identifiers so this is object x and i'm accessing field y and i use the dot notation uh, rather than the brackets notation that we saw. So the other functionality that we're going to support from JavaScript is x.y. And what x.y does is it looks, it calls method y in object x. Notice that x and y have to be identifiers. And then what we see is parentheses and we see at e and then ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. So what the ellipses are saying is that you can have zero or more expressions. So here what we're talking is really multi-argument rather than just a single one. Then we are declaring a function where we say that a function has a name. No, actually it has no name. It, this is an abs uh, a lambda and it takes, sorry it's not a lambda, <laughs> it is a named function. So the name is missing from, from here actually. I'll fix it in the slides before I upload it. So this should be function and the name of the function and then the arguments. Uh, and then the body is going to be an expression, which could be another function inside of it. It could be a class defined inside of it. It could be anything. The other thing that we're going to support is the new construct that we learned. And you can have any expression here, followed by parentheses and comma separated uh, expressions. Then we're also going to support the class constructor. So we can write class and then we, we assign it to a variable. But then we have extends and then we have an expression. We have a single constructor and zero or more methods. And each method is just given by a name. And the arguments are, of course, the parameters are, of course, identifiers. And the body is an expression. So now I'm just showing you code in JavaScript and how we would represent it in JavaScript. And I want to highlight a few notable dis differences. The first one is, of course, the syntax, where you see this is the JavaScript syntax, and we're using an X S expression based, parenthesis based um, syntax, just so we can parse it using Racket. So now we can see all the various different things so functions are anonymous. They do not have names. So if I want to create a function shape, what I have to do, I have to assign it to shape. So I do let shape, and then I create a function. And inside a function, I have access to the this, right? So this is visible here. And now the set exclamation mark is the same as an assignment. So it's how we, we mutate an object. So we say that I want to mutate this dot x, and I want to mutate, I want to assign x to it, and I want to assign y to this dot y. 
Okay, so it's exactly these two lines of code. And notice that there's a begin. Begin is just so you can write multiple, um, it's sequencing multiple expressions. So if you write expression one, semicolon, expression two, semicolon, expression three, you would write them inside begin, expression one, expression two, and so on. So next we have this line where we're doing let p equals new shape. So we do let p equals new, and then the first parameter is going to be the object, or sorry, the function constructor, which in this case is shape. Uh, and then there are two parameters, 10 and 20, and they're passed after. So all of this, this is the syntax of, of new, where this is not optional, but the arguments are, of course, optional. You could have zero parameters. Then we have this assignment, and notice what we're doing. We're doing shape.prototype.translate, and as you will see in SimpleJS, that's not possible. You cannot do multiple dots, so you have to encode it with lets. So if I want to access translate, I first need to load the prototype object. So I do let shape minus proto to read the prototype. And then if I want to mutate it, which is what I'm doing here, right? I'm assigning something to translate. I use set exclamation mark. And this is the field I want to assign. And then what is the code? It's going to be this anonymous function. So I use function. Again, a block of code. So you have begin and then two assignments. So you have set and you're reading the value this. So you have this x. And in in our language, the way we do built-ins is with the exclamation mark. So that's just for, because we don't have a code for um, function translation, sorry, function application, as you'll see, we only, we're only translating apply. So this is just so we can distinguish between a method call and function call. And function calls have an exclamation mark preceding it, a bang. Then how do we call a method? This is this. The syntax for calling a method. So you have a dot notation here, and these have to be identifiers, and then you pass the, the arguments right after that. And finally, returning a p is just adding p as the last expression. So the last expression is the one being returned, exactly like uh, corresponds to the return of p. So we don't have, we don't support, you know, a return in the middle. We don't support that in simple JS. So this is how you would write, and I hope you spend a bit of time trying to understand, go through this example line by line, and make sure you understand the, your source language. So next what we're going to do is we're going to see a next example for rectangle. And in rectangle what we have is um, function rectangle, and we have this assignment where we're assigning the prototype of rectangle to be the prototype of shape. Then we're creating a new rectangle. And this is the same example, so not a, not a lot of stuff new here uh, because we already knew about begin, we already knew about set, so not a lot of new things different. So you have this let here, which rep is represented here. So everything should match, I hope. So in this example, we talked in our last lesson that this example actually has a bug, if you think about, or it has, it can have a subtle bug which is because we are just assigning the rectangle prototype to be the shape prototype, if you add a method to rectangle, you are effectively adding a method to shape. We also talked about how to fix this. And the way we fix it is we have to create a new object and inherit all the fields so that we kind of copy in the quotation mark the prototype of shape and assign the result of that on um, to shape. So how do we do that? We don't have a way to in, to represent um, this literal, ob the object literal, but we do have a way to encode it, which would be you create a new function, and again, a function is used to create a new object, right? And then I set the prototype of the function to be shape.prototype, and then I assign um, to prototype a new so that we create the object. What the new is the thing that is creating the object, and then function is initializing it, and here we're, it's not doing anything, but then it inherits the proto field from shape.prototype. So effectively, it is writing this line of code. 
highlighted in blue. And how do we do that? Translation is on the right hand side. I do hope you spend a bit of time trying to understand what's going on because it's going to be crucial for homework eight.